Good morning, folks, or good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're uh, watching this or listening to this. Today's Just Baseball show uh, is a fun one. It's all three of us. But we also recorded on Thursday at about 1.15 p.m. That's when we started. And uh, a lot of this stuff involving Shohei Otani and Ipe Mizuhara um, broke after the fact. So I just wanted to sit down and kind of give you everything that has come out since we stopped recording. You'll hear uh, me, Aram, and Peter talk about it. And then actually in the middle of the episode, you'll hear uh, when Jeff Passan broke the news that it was $16 million, not four and a half. But I just want to read a couple of uh, interesting threads on Twitter that I feel like best summarize what's going on here and like i don't really think this is a place for much opinion but uh you know let your minds run where they're going to uh this from joe pompliano who does a great job on twitter the department of justice just announced that shohei otani's interpreter ipe mizuhara has been charged with bank fraud after allegedly stealing more than 16 million dollars from otani Mizuhara is now facing up to 30 years in federal prison. The DOJ says that Mizuhara brought Otani to a bank in Arizona and assisted him with opening an account for his MLB paychecks. Mizuhara then allegedly denied Otani's reps access to the account. Um, think about that, which you will. The DOJ also says Mizuhara used Otani's bank account to buy a thousand baseball cards online that are worth about $325,000. Otani provided his cell phone to law enforcement during the investigation, and they say there is no evidence that he knew what Mizuhara was doing. Also, just want to walk through a couple of uh, Jeff Passan, Jeff Passan's uh, readest, latest tweets, pardon. And uh, Passan, he, he clipped a full article from Alden Gonzalez, which does a, a really good job of all of this. Um, Alden's initial tweet was, Ipe Mizuhara, Shohei Otani's longtime interpreter and confidant, has been charged with bank fraud after it was discovered he transferred more than $16 million from Otani's account to an alleged illegal sports book, federal authorities announced in L.A. court. U.S. Attorney Martina Estrada, uh, the bets do not appear to have been made on the sport of baseball. So that is uh, an important one. And then we've got uh, some other things here. Um, investigators also relied on recorded phone calls from the bank in which Mizuhara falsely identified himself as Otani to, quote, trick and deceive bank employees into authorizing the transfers. Um, this is from the government's complaint against Ipe Mizuhara from Passin. Uh, on or about November 14th, 2022, Mizuhara messaged, messaged Bookmaker One, stating, quote, I'm terrible at this sport betting thing, huh? LOL. Any chance you can bump me again? As you know, you don't have to worry about me not paying. Um, goes on, and uh, you've got Losing bets of nearly $183 million, winning bets of more than 142 and there's about $40.7 million in losses. Ipe never placed a single bet on baseball. This one, a seeming, and, and Passon says, a seeming confession from Ipe Mizuhara via text to a bookmaker uh, on the day that uh, the initial ESPN story ran. On or about March 20th, 2024, Mizuhara messaged Bookmaker One stating, quote, have you seen the reports? Bookmaker One responded, quote, yes, but that's all bullshit. Obviously, you didn't steal from him. I understand it's a cover job. I totally get it. Mizuhara then responded to Bookmaker One, quote, technically, I did steal from him. It's all over for me. However you want to perceive the word technically in there, uh, that's up to you. Um, but... The federal investigation is uh, close to coming to an end or has entirely come to an end. And um, they are confirming that Otani had uh, no involvement in this. And it was all Ipe Mizuhara. So that's the information that we've gotten since the podcast was recorded. And now enjoy the Just Baseball Show. Jordan Montgomery ditches Scott Boris. That's kind of exciting. We'll talk about that right away. We have a little bit of closure in the Ipe Shohei saga, so we'll give you the update on that. Uh, we're also going to play a game. We got one starter from each division that we're intrigued by. They've gotten off to a nice start, and we think there's some validity to it. Peter has the hottest hitters of the week. And then we wrap with a preview of the weekend. It's a pretty good weekend of baseball, and it's all brought to you by whom? BetMGM, the king of sports books. Download the BetMGM app on iOS or Android. And when you do, and when you deposit, 
use code just baseball. What you're going to do is you're going to make a bet of at least $10, and then you will get a first bet offer up to 1500 paid back in bonus bets on BetMGM. Remember to use that code just baseball. Gambling problem? Call or text 1 800 Gambler. Must be 21 or older, and terms and conditions apply. That's what we're brought to, Jack McMullen. You're telling me, Aram, that you're not staying in South Florida for Max Fried and Trevor Rogers, then Chris Sale and Max Meyer, and then Charlie Morton and Jesus Lazardo? You know, I don't like to see – it's kind of like – I enjoy UFC, but I don't like watching somebody just get absolutely bludgeoned. You know, like that's where I kind of draw the line. You know, like so the throw that's the towel why a lot in of kind of thing. For the fights, actually. That's why people watch hockey. Yeah, so I, I just I don't like seeing bloodbaths. So I'm um, I'm gonna pass. I'm going back up to New York, uh, literally right after we record this. But that should be a fun series. Marlins picked up the second win, but uh, now I, I I'm I'm more interested in maybe Mets Mets Royals. I think that's what we yeah. got going on in the city this weekend. Uh, that that could be interesting. Aram, did you see the marketing move from Miami? You see what Peter Pratt, host of Locked On Marlins, posted on his Twitter about the Marlins sending out emails, basically hyping up, "Come see the Braves, come see the Braves at Lone Depot Park." And it's all about the Braves, their their supposed rival. Yeah, no, I mean the, the other time it was like, what was it? Like root against the Mets. I, I don't even remember what it was. They, they, they've they've. It's not the first time that they've tried to promote. Uh, getting people to the park through anything but themselves, which is always interesting. At least so they, I, they connected the dots on the Jake Burger's burger. That's a good one. Yeah. No, that was that was some outside the box stuff. Yeah. So I will tell you, that's what bad teams do. Um, mm-hmm. Really? Growing up, I had DePaul basketball season tickets. My dad and I would go to DePaul basketball and they would say, hey, come see Kemba Walker and the Yukon Huskies. Come see yeah. Greg Monroe and the Georgetown Hoyas. Uh, like that's that's kind of well, the marketing strategy for bad teams. And guess what? The Miami Marlins, bad team. What is How about John team? Fisher? John Fisher talking about the move to Sacramento. And, oh, you're going to get to see Judge. some great players here, like Aaron, Aaron Judge, Judge. Slamming homers. <laughs> yeah, like Aaron Judge slamming homers when he comes to town. Uh, and and maybe a story Ruiz if he's walking enough by then. But we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. They'll, they'll see him anyway. So they'll, yeah, they'll see him in a triple-A matchup instead. Yeah. Can we uh, make fun of Scott Boris as long as we're making fun of uh, teams right now? We can. That sounds great. Uh, Jordan Montgomery officially cut ties with Scott Boris. He hires Joel Wolf at Wasserman to rep him. This is on the heels of a, was it one plus one? Or was it just a one for 25? I think it was a one plus one with Arizona. One plus one. Um, like I, I immediately quote tweeted Kylie McDaniel's tweet who broke the news. And I said, is this the beginning of the end? And, You know, history would say no, because there have been plenty of people that have left Scott Boris and gone to other agents. There have been plenty of people that have left other agents and gone to Scott Boris. So this this constantly happens. But with how much of an un like an unfathomable disaster this offseason was, it gives me that vibe a little bit more than recent years and, and recent guys leaving Scott Boris. Yeah, I I mean, the the one thing that I was kind of holding on to is like, okay, he failed from the public perception of each of these deals, but none of the players have said anything outwardly. None of the players have switched representation. So maybe there's more at hand that we don't know about. Maybe the market just didn't, you know, I'm just trying to play the devil's advocate in my head because Boris, at the end of the day, he's earned that, right? I mean, being the guy that has paced uh, the standards for all agents in terms of just volume, uh, mega deals, breaking records, doing what he has done. There's a reason why all of the best of the best have gone to him. But that was kind of the voice in the back of my head. I'm like, all right, well, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt since none of these players have come out and you know even said something without saying it, you know, like a diplomatic. Eh, yeah, I thought I'd get more. It, it was tight lipped. But now seeing Montgomery jump, uh, that did kind of validate the, hey, yeah, this offseason probably was pretty darn bad and if you look at all of the projections so everyone across like no one in the industry even considered a 1-1 uh, on on really any of these guys let alone a such a safe arm like Jordan Montgomery people knew it was going to be weird with Snell but nobody expected that kind of deal so yeah I do think that this is kind of the beginning of and I'm not going to say the end because he's always going to be Scott Boris to a degree but I think this is the end of the domination 
of Scott Boris, right? Where he's not the clear cut number one. He's not UConn women's basketball. Like that's over. And I think we're going to have now what we have in women's basketball, which is more parody. Like that's the best analogy I can give is like, he's still going to be one of the main players like UConn women's is, but they're not running away with it, winning every single game for several years in a row. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have much to add other than just to further that point that you said, Aram. Um, I'm more surprised that more players haven't given Scott Boris the boot. It was just Jordan Montgomery because Scott Boris was at the helm of a lot of disasters, whether that be Bellinger or Matt Chapman. And we could continue to go down the line of guys who just didn't get what they wanted to, which is including the two time national league and American league Cy Young award winner and Blake Snell. So I really want to make fun of Scott Boris And I am going to make fun of Scott Boris for losing Jordan Montgomery and being the biggest loser of the offseason. But I am disappointed that more guys haven't said, you know what, Scott, I'm good. I'm moving on. And I wonder why. It's a tough process. Like a lot of guys will just trust that one person for life. And, you know, you you bounce around. It's, It's like a bunch of roommates, right? If you have a bad roommate experience for, you know, three years in a row with three different roommates, it doesn't shine well on you because like you might be the problem. If you bounce around agencies and you're, you know, with this guy for two years and then you're with this guy for five years and then you're with this guy for three years, it doesn't look good on you. It it screams you're a bad client. So yes, I understand that. But in this specific instance, no, I would ditch him. I feel like they have a great excuse. I would ditch him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you're right about that in the grand scheme of things, but in this specific I don't think anyone would say, well, Blake Snell's a bad client because he's leaving Scott Boris or no, Matt Chapman screwed. or Cody Bellinger. I would expect all of them to kind of get a pass for any agency who wants to pick them up. And because they've all signed very short-term deals, they can all then hit the open market quicker and maybe get that four, five, maybe even six year deal that a lot of them were searching for. I can see it. The last thing I really have on on this whole like Situate. I think there are more players, I think, either starting to kick the tires or like, I know D.L. Hall made the jump, you know, not too long ago. I do wonder if, you know, those types of players start to do it a little bit earlier. Um, you know, if you're a vet, you know, I think you're just kind of comfortable in figuring like if you're a Juan Soto, like you're going to get your bag kind of no matter what. But that is going to be something that I think people are going to be very locked in on. At the end of the day, though, like I feel like I could negotiate Juan Soto's contract to a degree. I mean, the nuances would definitely go over my head, but I don't think I would struggle to get him the money he deserves. I don't think that part's too difficult. I I think it's when you have some of the more unique, and especially in the pitching side, we're in a world now where teams are probably a little bit nervous to commit long-term money to pitchers with everything going on in the game right now. And I get that, uh, but with that considered, I think it puts even more importance on your agent and and what exactly they're doing and how they're doing it for you. Um, if, if I'm not mistaken, isn't Jung Hoo Lee a, a Boris guy? He is. I mean, Boris did pretty well on that one. So, like, I wonder if it's more of a, a – I mean, and Bellinger was kind of a, a tough situation. I wonder if he's just really struggling with the arms more than the position players. And, again, I wonder how much of that is an indictment on Boris versus – just his old tactics not working with teams, just being a little bit more apprehensive to long-term deals on on pitchers and Chapman Boris and not really being adjustable or malleable. Chapman and Bellinger, though, position players that didn't get the contract. No, I, Those are two guys Bellinger, I wouldn't want to give a long-term deal, though, though to. Agreed, because Chapman's game has changed so drastically in the last two years where he's punching out all the time now and like he's holing his bat type of guy when he really wasn't at the beginning of his career. And Bellinger, he was... Really, really good, then really, really bad, then really, really good. How do you negotiate? That's a very tough one. So like Arm saying, I'm willing to kind of give him the benefit of the doubt on that one where that might have just been a confusing hitter to try and sell to teams. But pitching, like, you know, I I understand. And Cole is not – I don't think Cole is Boris. Is Cole Boris? No. No. No, he's not. But, like, you know, Cole got 324 because he's durable. Oh, no, he is. He is. He is. He is. He, he is, is Boris. Boris. Okay. So – you know, like that one makes sense. It's, hey, this guy's been constantly available and he's one of the best pitchers in the game. The guys that fall into the DL Hall scenario where his career has already gone through ebbs and flows and he's not even in arbitration yet is, is one where, you know, I would get away. And I'm I'm just 
considering these guys, like a Brandon Woodruff situation, I feel like Scott Boris would start spazzing out if he had to try and deal with that one. Or like Kyle Wright, the situation that he's in right now. Guys that are shelved for a little bit or have extenuating circumstances as they hit free agency. If Shane Bieber was a Boris guy, he might not get signed. Like it, it would be very hard for him to handle that. So I just think, like Arm saying, with the volatility of starting pitching right now and with how many guys are going to be on the shelf, it, it feels like a really rough time to be an old school thinker in a modern free agency. And I'm I'm totally up for spin zoning this into a positive in order to get Juan Soto on a one plus one deal to the New York Yankees again. If Why do you want, want start... that? Like, just give him the 15 year deal. But it's fine. Like, if we want to hype up Scott Boris, he's done a great job. You know, it's tough to manage these pitchers in this market. And sometimes it's tough for hitters. So maybe Soto should go to the Yankees on a one plus one. I, I'm on your guys' side here. Dude. No, no, no. And you don't want that because he's going to be pissed at the New York Yankees and he's not going to sign the long-term deal with the New York Yankees. No, but he might be pissed at the baseballs and hit them to the moon. Don't the, you agree, Aram? This is a good the, So the, the other thing that I'm interested in is he did kind of do well on the Bogarts deal and then now it sends us into, okay, you got Bregman in free agency this year. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the guy that I'm kind of watching, I think, more so. Can you, and I don't, he's not going to be able to get him a Xander deal because Xander, I think, is on a little bit of a different level. But what do you do with Bregman? Again, I think it's really easy to get Soto a deal. Bregman is the one where I'm like, okay, that's a little bit of a volatile player. But at the same time, like volatile in the sense that sometimes he looks like an MVP candidate, other times he just looks like a really solid big leaguer. Uh, what kind of contract do you get that guy going into this stage of his career? That's where I'll make like my final final assessment of of you know what we've got going on here with Boris but again I think it's just we're getting to the point now where you're not going to have one person dominating the entire space that's better for baseball it but is. based on my opinion of is he fully fully falling off I think I'll make that decision uh on, on my end uh after this offseason coming up where he's going to have some a wide range of client types I think and player types yeah the feds got cooking and the feds found out that Ipe was very, very guilty. And that is our update on the Ipe Mizuhara Shohei Otani saga. Um, everything that Shohei Otani was saying has been, quote unquote, proven true by the feds at this point. Um, Otani was not aware that Ipe was taking money. Um, so all you trolls that are saying that Otani is a gambling addict can go away finally. No, no, they can't. No, we're they not can't. going away. We're not going I, away. Nothing anyone ever. We're said. not going away. Are you a troll? Are you one of those guys? All I'm gonna say is, you know, I have people in different corners of the world. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, I, I'm just I'm saying people aren't gonna stop because I literally said on Twitter, I said people will say that Ipe was still the fall guy. Like federal authorities give a crap about MLB's public relations weirdo stuff. But glad we can put this to rest and get back to baseball. That's where I'm at. Of course, I got QAnon in my replies like, oh, yeah, the FBI notoriously, uh, you know, not corrupt and very clean. I, I get it. I understand that there's a history there. Uh, if you Google the FBI, you'll find plenty of of instances where federal authorities have, have been corrupt. Sure. But here here's where we're at. You can only operate on what we know. And what we know is what's been reported, what's been told to us and what's been investigated. And I don't think that federal authorities care that much about what major league baseball's optics are. Gen genuinely, I don't. Um, and if you want to believe what you want to believe, that's fine. But I would like to believe that more investigations are, you know, good faith quality, not corrupt investigations than not. I'm not saying there aren't plenty of investigations that are corrupt, but there's way more important things than whether a baseball player was gambling or not, especially when they already proved that it wasn't on major league baseball. So the punishment would have still not even been that bad for him from a baseball lens when the precedent is legitimately just a fine. So that's where I'm like, just so annoyed with the whole thing. It's like, he wasn't even going to get punished. I don't think that badly anyways, there would have been no. some legal implications. There would have been some things. He would have not been banned from baseball. Right. Was, was he going to get fined like a million dollars? It's a sliding yeah. scale again, like rich players get big fines. Uh, league minimum players get small fines. Like what was it? Jared Cosart with the Marlins. That's the precedent. He got a small fine. Otani would get a big fine if he got fined for a million bucks. Okay. 
the, and I the feds hit Barry Bonds with a perjury charge and 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 like you know I think he was on like on probation for years I think there was some other aspects of like they don't care dude like that that's the dumbest thing in the world to me like oh major league baseball is like paying off the fed like come on like take the tinfoil cap off they investigated it it's it's over uh if you want to believe that that's fine go ahead but like this is just i'm glad that we're at a point now where we can kind of just turn the page and you know just enjoy what this guy's doing on the field which is just ridiculous yeah yeah i was more making a joke because people's cognitive dissonance is very live here no matter what you're told, it could be from the feds, it could be from anybody, people just choose not to believe it because they want to believe that Shohei Otani is a gambler. A lot of people just want to see the downfall of the Los Angeles Dodgers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Are you all right? People, yeah, I'm okay. People just okay. want to see the downfall there. I mean, we're hearing it from the feds. If you don't believe in the FBI or you don't believe in any of this kind of stuff, you and don't you believe, believe in the FBI. Yeah, if you, if I believe, believe in the FBI. It's no, not the Easter Bunny. I believe in the Federal Bureau of Investigation. What I meant to say is, do you believe that they're honest? Now, we this is not the podcast about politics. You can believe whatever you want over there. But Major League Baseball doesn't have like a secret dark chamber of gangsters that are able to make the pull with the federal government in order to clear Shohei Otani. Ipe admitted it. The feds got on it and made the exact same point. End of story. Until we get more updates. I'm yeah. choosing to believe them. Yeah. I mean, and and, that, and look, if he pulled it off and, and got away with it, then like you got to deal with that too. So like he's, he's good. He's off the hook. Like just watch him play baseball. Now, if, if you think he gambled fine, whatever, but just like keep it to yourself and enjoy watching this guy play baseball. There's, you know, a lot worse things that we could be hung up on about players and, and things like that. And again, it was like, it wasn't even gambling on baseball. They were already able The bookie himself said there was not a single bet placed on baseball. So like, you know, if, if, if you want to make it a big deal, like go ahead. But at the end of the day, like, even if he did it, which again, I don't think he did it all. I think it's pretty clear. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. This is the double-edged sword of baseball players where it's like everybody's clamoring for them to show more personality and be more present and right. Like do things that, that transcend who you are on the field. And now we're just begging people to appreciate what he's doing on the field. Cause it's like, Hey, you're making shit up about what he's doing off the field. Stop doing that. Dude's hitting 345. He's got 40 total bases at this point. On By the way, elbow. we did it yesterday. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's tied with Mookie now. He's the league leader in total bases coming back from Tommy John surgery and we saw what happened to Bryce Harper early on in his last year that it took him a little while. No, it's not taking Shohei. He doesn't have 10 home runs yet, but he's spraying doubles, spraying singles. He's just hitting the piss out of the ball. Yeah. Why do you not think he has 10 homers yet? I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little disappointed. I'm not going to lie. What's going on? Mm. I don't know. Maybe that's a conspiracy. Might be. <laughs>